What's going on, guys? Let me show you something here. We finally did it. We have a 2.3 second car. Not a 2.4, not a 2.5, but a legitimate 2.3 second car. How did I get there? Well, we're gonna cover that in this video. But to make a long story short, it took a long time. I put about 15 to 16 hours into this car. This week, I had to pick a motor. I had to pick gearing. I had to pick ESC settings, change ESCs and everything to get ready for the upcoming race this weekend. Welcome to the Dorky and 40 channel. If you are new here, I am Chad. Thank you very much for stopping by. If you're into all of this cool RC stuff, don't forget to like and subscribe to the video and check out some of the other stuff on the channel. Now we do got lots of cool videos coming up real quick. We're gonna be checking out the new battery here, the RevTech 6400, like the Max Amps brick. We'll see how that goes. And the crazy thing we're gonna be checking out is this baby right here the castle mamba 8s this is going to be running a two-turn motor we're going to be getting nasty with this thing for sure one other thing the dr10 is being resurrected and it is going to be going on the beef tubes brisket chassis that just shipped today so keep an eye out for that so if you wonder why there hasn't been any content this week it's because of this video here so let's just get right to it right now and show you guys exactly what is going on so i was having a great time with the tekin the problem is i just wasn't making the ground up that i wanted to and the data logging on it is not as helpful as what's in the drk so i went back to the drk in the breakout chassis running a three turn trinity now you can run a three turn with drk you just got to be careful this drk can handle it and if it goes it goes what can you do i'm going to be trying to figure out with my gearing and everything else this is the motor that i want to run i have a three and a half turn bantam that's a rotoron motor i know it's not a nick bell motor but it's tuned it's shimmed it's got the big rotor and all that kind of stuff so the whole goal tonight is to try to get this to a point to get a lot of good data and then hopefully we can do the same thing with the three and a half phantom pick one and then probably do it all over again a lot of tuning out here with my buddy brandon this weekend i'll show you the tuning book here you can see all of these tuning notes that i have going through all the different gearings no timing or nothing just basic type of stuff so that way we had our speeds our ets what kind of rpms we were getting our our starting voltage our lowest voltage that we saw you know you can see final drive ratios and stuff going from 84 18 84 24 90 24 90 18 so on and so forth i got to a point of about 96 19 where i started seeing some really big gains and some nice voltages so then i started playing around with everything in the drk and i just didn't get it to where i just didn't get it to where i was happy with so i decided to go completely different and depend on the sanwa yes sanwa m17 so that means the drk is basically fully unlocked all five stages that are 100 percent the shortest delay possible turbos at 60 degrees slew rate uh, i can't remember if slew rates at six or eight or whatever no turbo delay no nothing just full power on the drk and then we're going to control that with the ramping and eat PA, curve, all that stuff in the radio. So we shouldn't have to make any changes in the DRK. <sighs> it's gonna be a lot, but we're gonna get logging with the DRK, which is important because that's gonna show us, you know, I know what ramp and stuff I can put that we're gonna figure that out. 97, 96, 95, 95, 94 is where I would like to be. 96 is okay, 97 is a little slow but we're gonna figure that out for sure. But the logging of the DRK is gonna show us what our voltages is doing and everything like that. Help us set our can timing. Probably gonna to have to increase that on this three turn Trinity because it's a box stock Trinity. And I think the can timing is set at like 22 degrees or something. It's not like tested or anything at all. So my last run with this car was a 245 
at 63 miles per hour on this road, which is, we know, I've said it a few times, a slow road. So we're gonna see if we can get close to that right now off the trailer we're not doing any prep all we're doing is i did use uh i have been using a lot of beetlejuice lately uh to condition the tire and man it just really opens it up big time you can just see all the little just like little individual holes around one thing about all of this data this week is i'm pretty sure things are gonna get even better because i noticed tonight that my cat pack on my drk is actually fried so I think I, while I was seeing really bad voltages this week, that was the reason why I never really thought to look at it and then I saw it. So that's gonna be getting replaced here tonight so that way we can run something. So in between runs, I'm just gonna be cleaning them with Simple Green and shop towels and getting all the dirt off of them, throwing them back on the warmers and that's it. No prep or nothing at all. Just try to keep everything as consistent as possible with my testing so that way I can make good decisions. And that's pretty much what you need to do too. This stuff takes a lot of time, a minute time crunch. Luckily the hurricane rain is staying to the south of us and working a ton of hours and I'm super stressed and everything because COVID has been crazy at our hospital again. And it's like, it's never gonna go away. But anyway, try to de-stress here and have a little bit of fun. So thanks for putting up with me. Let's make some rips now. So I'm also experimenting with these big old spur gears just because I can now with the breakout. So this is a 9624 that we're running. I got the best so far out of a 9622. The 9620 seemed to be slower. So we're gonna try the 24 here and see what we can do. Just gonna let these warm up a couple more minutes. This video might be 15 minutes long. It might be 45 minutes long, but we're gonna do it all in one video. I hate it when people say they break up into parts of video just for more YouTube views. I don't really care about that. I like to get you guys all the information out there. You can watch it in multiple pieces or whatever. <laughs> All right, so that run, we did a 255, 64 miles per hour. We only made 60,000 RPMs. Starting voltage was 8.3 and our lowest was 5.6. So it definitely hit the battery hard. Throttle punch was at one. Uh, I'm gonna make another run with punch at 100. We're gonna have a lower battery. I'm sure the battery's gonna get hit even harder. It seems like 96.24 is probably a little too much. Right now, it seems like 9620 is kind of the winner, unless I wanted to try something like 9619, which I think I tried that before, but that was without any timing at all. And I was running a 25 at 58 and 64,000 RPM. So doing a lot better. Um, I'd have to look and see what those actual uh, final drive ratios are on those, put those into the calculator. So I'm using this little gearing app here. And if we go ahead and put these in, so our current gear is 2496. And let's say we go back to 1996. So a positive change, it says, gives you more acceleration, but less top speed. Kind of trying to walk that fine line between how much acceleration do you want and how much top speed do you want? trying to gear it for top speed, but it's not making the RPMs because obviously it's just getting hit too hard with the gearing or something and the max amps battery just can't handle it. Uh, if we look at what we would be looking at, final drive ratio, we'd be going from a 10.4 to a 13.14. Um, you're gonna get so many different opinions on all this stuff on what the maximum is. Everybody's car is different. Mine is gonna be totally different than yours. Yep, all that's right or close enough. Looking into this a little bit more, even with a 96 tooth spur, it seems like I might need to go even lower on the pinion than I was going before at an 18. So I think I'm gonna try this one more time with throttle punch at 100 and just see what kind of a difference I get on that. And then we're just gonna make a huge drastic uh, pinion gear change. You know, maybe we're gonna go down to like 16, 17 and see what that does. Cause I did run the 96, 18 before I believe, or the 96, 19 I did and the numbers weren't, numbers weren't too bad. 
All right, so the questions keep coming. 96.17 gave me a 254, 61 miles per hour, but gave me 77,000 RPMs starting at 8.2 volts and my lowest volt was 6.3. So we picked up almost 17,000 RPMs and our voltage, of course, increased by, geez, I mean, we're approaching three quarters of a volt, um, but we didn't gain any time and we lost speed now that could be because the battery wasn't fully charged but hey that's you know kind of not good enough for me so we're gonna run a fully charged battery you know we've got a lot of time to make up if we want to try to get to like a 2-2 or into the two threes so i don't think this gearing is it i still go back and look at my most successful run which was with the 22 and that was a 241 at 65,000. And I think that was around 63 or 64 miles per hour. So the 2296 combination still looks like it might be the best. This might just be too low. Maybe I bump that up to an 18 or 19. I've already ran that, like I said before, and that gave me those numbers right there which are not too far off. So let's keep playing with gearing and see what we can get. So no real progress, tried out all kinds of different gearing, even down to 81.22, made more mile per hour, of course, 64 miles per hour, but at a 255 and it totally nuked the battery, only made 50,000 RPM. So you can see it's getting dark out here. I just made my best hit of the night running at 81.22, but it just totally nuked my battery. 65 miles per hour at a 244, but it's just not gonna work. So we're gonna make one more hit and we're gonna drop down to a 20 to see if we can make some more RPMs and some more speed, see what happens. 255 at 64 miles per hour. So this is the point where frustration kicks in and you just gotta push through and remember that this is a hobby and that you're having fun. Personally, I feel like I've been stuck here forever, even with the DR10. It's like, I feel that I should be, I don't know, stuck in the two threes or something, or the two twos, or even the two fours. Like, you know, still posting two fives is just really, really gut-wrenching when you've got this much time and effort and money invested into this. But I'm gonna push through, let's just keep on going. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Back out to you on a windy day here and as promised, we made uh, some uh, switches to the car, made a few setup changes to the steering rack, tow, and also the big change is we went to the three and a half turn Phantom instead of the three turn just to see if the DRK could handle it a little bit better and we get better voltages, everything like that. Previously, this was my most successful motor ESC combo that I had that laid in me around 231 at the best. We're starting at 9017 gearing on this and see how things go. And uh, yeah, so let's, uh, let's start testing and hoping for some better results today. <laughs> All right, everybody back out for night three in a row of testing and tuning, getting ready for the fall classic. Didn't get a lot that I wanted to get last night on camera, but we went over at Allen the bench here and we're out here. We're gonna try 9018 gearing, even though I think 9017 worked good. You know, we hit a 241, 85,000 RPMs, really ripping 64 65 miles per hour really great especially for this road since it's one of the slower roads that we run on because it's really ragged down through there so you you really lose a lot of speed had to keep my slew rate in the mclean down to about six or eight degrees per tenth of a second couldn't go up any higher on it just because when it hits that stuff it starts breaking loose so on a regular track we definitely got more to go and that's a good thing. Radio ramping with the DRK and the San Juan M17 has just been a huge success. Got the car warming up here, just made sure my steering was all good after running last night. Had to make some changes here. 
Also went back to this Sky RC tire warmer just because it runs off of 4S, gets a lot hotter. Now that it's cooled down out here, the tire warmers and maybe just their age, they still work, but running these on 4S, I can go even hotter if I want to, if the concrete and everything goes down. Current temperature of the surface is actually only 88 degrees. So we went from testing on a 115 degree surface. This is probably gonna be more comparable to what we're actually gonna be racing on this weekend. So another good thing. So that was the first test of 9018. We're gonna look the log and see what we did. Probably not much. That was my off the trailer ramp of 97. So we still managed a 2.6 at 58 miles per hour. Not too bad for an off the trailer hit just to see how things go. We know that the car handled it good and that it's gonna take more. So let's give it some more. So that run definitely was a little rough. I took my ramp from 97 to 95, which is a pretty big jump. Now you can see that the car was really wild. Gonna look at the logs. Definitely it's gonna show that we spun the tires. We went faster, 62 miles per hour. Our timing went down to 255, but we know that that's just not where we want to be. So I'm gonna look at these logs, see what's going on. Maybe try one more at 96 to see what I can get. And then we'll go ahead and probably throw that 17 pinion back in there just because I feel that it's a lot easier on the car. It's gonna be all about that smooth stuff we were talking about in the last video. So the log didn't look too bad. Just so I'm not second guessing myself again, I went ahead and let's just load the three and a half turn high traction tune into the car, make a pass and see where it is putting us at. We'll put the radio back to R mode one, which is 100% everything like you would normally calibrate. Doesn't it figure that was my fastest pass I've had on this road? 241, but only at 62 miles an hour. But who cares about miles per hour, right? Well, that wasn't too bad. It looks like I was making enough power. Voltages were good gonna just jack up this tune a little bit and see if I can pull out something in the two threes here and then uh, we'll be done playing around maybe take a couple more rips because again we're settling on 9017 gearing just testing out this 9018 for you guys see if we can get more rpms out of that tomorrow it's gonna be the big test day though where we're gonna put in more tune and all that kind of stuff we're gonna really 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 make a lot of passes on a faster road and try to figure that one out Holy moly. Well, we finally cracked the two threes on this violent, slow road. What do you think about that? It took pretty much everything it had in her. High slew rate, 60 degrees of timing, an aggressive launch, most powerful I've ever launched. Things are just really working well tonight. Gonna have to, uh, gonna have to give it up to Sticky Icky Preps and the Beetlejuice. The tire conditioner is great. Just opens up the tires and almost turns them into like a knobby works really great on this dirty type of road. So I guess you could consider that a dry tire, that simple green warmers. Seems like it's worked. <laughs> Slightly less charged battery, still took it 241 at 65 miles per hour. So we're back into the two fours again. I knew we couldn't stay there for that long. Maybe I like 9018 better. All right, so that was a 255 with a little bit of a less than full charged battery. We're gonna go back to the 18. That I think was giving us uh, the best time. We're gonna be complete heathens. We're gonna go up to a 19. You don't know if you don't know, right? All right, cold tires, I think that was enough. I'll probably just go back to the 18. That's what I got my best time out here. That really says a lot because I've never ran into two threes here. So we'll go back to the 9018 
and we'll see you guys out at the next spot tomorrow. So now that we found our motor, our gearing and everything, we went to the fast road tonight and that is where I put up these times right here. Take a look at that, two threes, a two three flat was my best time. This was running reaction time prep because it was getting a little chilly outside. No capacitor, running straight off the batteries, didn't get to test the new pack yet. Wanted to wait until we had a little bit of protection on there so we don't hurt that too bad. Man, tomorrow, this weekend, sometimes we're definitely going to be running two twos in the Gen SS. I can just feel it. The breakout is just performing it fantastic. If you haven't seen my video on it, check it out. It's a great chassis to go with. It's so tunable. They just released even more extra parts for it today. I know on a TSR podcast, Tim Smith was actually speaking of a few things, those swivel body mounts and what everything that you, we've been seeing online from R1. He was gonna send some messages off. So maybe we're gonna see something like that. Things just keep rolling and rolling and rolling with no prep drag RC. It is just awesome, awesome. So thanks guys for sticking with me throughout this long video. I hope you learned something. I know I learned a lot this week and had a blast doing it, even though sometimes it just felt like I was hitting that wall, but I was able to break through. I hope you break through too, and I hope that I can help you along your way. Peace.